Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn, the sea returned to its normal height. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers and the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work of the Lord that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant, Moses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, 
and the presence of the God of Jacob, who can turn the hard rock into a pool of water and flint stone into a flowing spring. The second reading is from Paul's letter to the church at Rome. <laughs> Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain. And those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also, those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God. While those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Peter came up and said to Jesus, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy times seven. Therefore the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the reckoning, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees imploring him, Lord, have patience with me and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But that same servant, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, pay what you owe. So his fellow servant fell down and besought him, have patience with me and I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison till he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that, all that debt because you besought me. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord delivered him to the jailers till he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. We 
I speak in the name of the risen Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Have you been overchurched today? <laughs> You know, oftentimes um, when I uh, am most prayerful, it's after I've done some exhaustive labor, some work where you just get to sit down in the sweat, you know, of the effort and just, you know, realize and recognize how slow things are really moving around you. I think this is one of those days, certainly. Um, today, I, I'd like to speak with you about the capacity uh, for grace in one's heart and soul and the challenge of growth. And I would like to begin that conversation um, referencing a feast that we celebrated this week. It was the Feast of the Holy Cross um, that was celebrated on the 15th. It, it goes by a couple different names and several different traditions. Even some traditions celebrate it, uh, like the Orthodox tradition, during uh, the season of Lent, appropriately, right at the end. And there, it's a representation and a discussion of the Passion Tide. It's all about Christ being crucified on the cross. For us, we celebrated on September 15th. Uh, and in that celebration that we participate in, it's not about the Passion Tide, but it's instead about what the cross represents for us as a people of faith. It's a different take or perspective upon um, uh, an instrument that has meant so many different things to so many different people. Um, and so the context with which we discuss it today is one um, that is bound up in the historicity of it, which is that of Constantine. Constantine was the uh, first Christian emperor of Rome. He democratized religion, brought it into the body politic, and in doing so, uh, condemned the cross as a means of execution and instead brought it forward as a uh, sign and a symbol of faith. And he did this uh, after he received uh, some land that he had inherited from his mother, Helena. Uh, and he, uh, that particular land was the Rock of Golgotha. And so his decision was on this particular space, he would remove the rubble that existed there and he would build uh, what would be one of the church's first large, uh, large spaces. It was a basilica, a round church there. And so he dug down and to get to that rock from all the rubble that was there and, and upon getting to the bottom, getting to that rock, it's there that he believed he found the cross. And he was so moved by finding what he believed to be Jesus' cross uh, that he said, here is where we will put the holy sepulcher. Here's where we'll place the altar uh, for this place of worship. And this cross will no longer be a sign or a symbol of torture, of the dispossessed, of the poor, of the weak, of the criminal, but instead it will be a sign of our faith, a sign of tradition. Now for us to make that leap, to go from it being an instrument of torture, which is what it was, to the leap of it being a sign of our faith, um, is probably not nearly as challenging as it was for the people of that particular time. Think about it. On Tuesday of last week, it was used to kill people. And on Tuesday of this week, it's now a sign of our faith. Like, how do you make that, uh, that leap, that jump? Um, other than saying some person in authority is, is telling us that this is what we now have to believe and this is the way that we have to believe it. And so we can imagine for a lot of them, uh, he had to abolish it. Uh, Constantine had to abolish its use as an instrument of torture for the people to make that leap to understand that it could be something else. But it is to say um, the challenge of understanding one thing as being one way and being for one purpose and now through the divine intervention of grace, now understanding it to be something different and new and special. Uh, and you see the, the inherent challenge in that. Uh, it's not an easy thing. Uh, especially if you hold it in the context of relationships. Think about really challenging personal relationships you have in your, in your life, ones that are sometimes so broken that you don't even want to offer that person a seat at the table to say that you could maybe uh, see the, the potential for grace and growth in that relationship where they could instead sit by you and break bread and drink wine with you. Um, it's something particular and special and important. Um, but it, it is a, a change that is not a new thing, it's just a difference in a thing. And that's an important nuance I want to draw out. It's, a, it's just a difference in a thing, a difference in the way that we conceive it and understand it. There's a really interesting um, 
a, a comic, comical uh, gospel called the Gospel of Bart. Have you read it? Okay. It's the story of Jesus' life from the time he was three years old until he was 30, which we don't know anything about. And it's not an extra biblical text. It's a funny uh, book about Jesus and all the hijinks he gets up to in his life. And one of the stories in the text is he sits there with, uh, with Bart, his, his brother, Bart. And um, Bart and Jesus have captured a bunch of lizards in the jar. And they take turns. One uh, takes a lizard out and Jesus smacks it with a hammer and kills it and then puts his finger on it, brings it back to life. <laughs> and then, then the other grabs it, puts the lizard down and the other one whacks it and Jesus brings that back to life. But, you know, it, it kind of speaks to the hijinks of being a young person and some of the foolishness that we participate in that. And, uh, you know, I, I, <clears throat> I can certainly see that. Um, when I, when I think about my own ministry and my own um, life and work and, and faith and practice, I was Bart uh, as a child. I was the one pulling the lizards out of the jar and smacking them with a hammer. Um, one time I can remember at a McDonald's, my sister, in the, in the 90s, silk was a really big thing, fashionable thing for kids to wear. And my sister had this silk shirt on and I, um, my dad knew about it. I took uh, McDonald's ketchup packets and I twisted them up and I put them under the tires of the car and I locked the door so she couldn't get in the car and then I told my dad uh, just pull back a little bit and it exploded all the ketchup packets and all the, and it shot all over her silk outfit um, I, I mentioned that because that's you know one of many uh, that was a lighthearted thing I've done many other things that are not quite so lighthearted not quite so fun but I mention it because it, it's, it was the challenge of, for my family specifically when I became an ordained person. Uh, they were like, what do I do with the, the Nick that puts ketchup packets under the wheels? What do I do with the guy that um, would dupe mom and dad so I could come back late on my curfew? Um, or the brother that maybe wasn't so great you know, when I could have been better? And, and I think that's the, uh, that's the challenge inside of uh, you know, our faith and practice. Um, it's understanding um, the opportunity for forgiveness and change and seeing one another in a different way for a different purpose. And so uh, I mention all these things because I, I say it in the context of Elliot's ordination. You know, um, my brothers and sisters, they, they, for me personally, they didn't really understand, you know, that I could be the same person that I was before sitting on the couch, being with them, uh, being a person of faith. And I think Christians in general face this. You know, you say, well, I'm a person of faith, I go to church, but I saw you sin last week. I saw you do this, I saw you do that, right? Um, but that's the, um, the abundant message of grace, that grace has that potential, forgiveness has that potential to, to be an agent of change in our lives where we can see things uh, that were of a, of a certain way and we can understand our growth and that person's growth or those instances for growth, um, that we might see them as evolving into that. And I think that's very much what it means uh, to me as I reflect about what the, the priesthood is and, and what that journey is. He's still Elliot, right? He's still Elliot. Um, and Elliot would say he, he's still Nick, uh, very much so. Um, and it's not that we've become, but we have become a different person. It's just that we've been changed and called into a new way of being uh, where we're asked um, to understand grace and forgiveness in a different way. Um, in part, so we can model that for other people. It's a little bit about modeling, but it's also in part to recognize that in the midst of that grace, in the midst of that forgiveness, we're still human beings. Uh, and so uh, that's the wonderful divine opportunity that is ordination. You know, it's remembering our humanness. It's understanding that we stand uh, as he stands in his chasuble, which is the symbol of the tabernacle. He stands in persona Christi. He is in the person of Christ as he stands at the altar and what that sharing means for us. Amen. Please stand.
join me in pronouncing the words of the faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. You can be seated. Or kneel. For the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, that its ministers, Father Nick and Father Elliot, that they may be accountable to God and guide us in the way of forgiveness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our leaders, local and national, may they be agents of peace and defenders of the good. May our nation be a blessing to all nations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For gratitude and reconciliation throughout the world, send your healing presence to the wounded places, to the victims of flooding in Libya, and the earthquake in Morocco. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this parish, especially on the ordination of Father Elliot, on the wedding of Karen and Richard, and the wedding anniversary of Kathy and Henry. May we lift one another up to do the good work of the gospel and be a light in the darkness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For anyone who is suffering, for the hopeless, for the lost, the hurting, and the anxious, for the sick and the hungry, and we name especially Sue, Priscilla, Katie, Carol, Tammy, June, Henry, Irene, Nancy, and Maddie. Please add your own intercessions. May God fill them with the Spirit and dwell in them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. We pray for all the saints, especially John, who have entered into the joyful rest of eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. O oh Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have not done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry. Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on 
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Around the clock. service bulletin you should see an insert that insert should tell you all about all the wonderful things going on in and of the life of this parish uh, today was a big milestone as we had our um, fall fair our is that what we call it I'm a little delirious so our church say again country fair I'm sorry country fair as they say in Virginia um, and so we had a wonderful turnout I'm not sure how many thousands of people um, but I do know that when I came in after the ordination today that people were lined up all the way on the road to checkmate um, you know and that's that's almost a mile away so quite a lot of people that came wonderful vendors lots of effort thank you to all of you who uh, participated in that important work be it uh, in sweat and blood or in prayer, or however you found yourself upon uh, this day, but we thank you for that. Um, also, uh, in the life of the parish, I mentioned that uh, John Boucher, a longtime member uh, of the congregation, passed a few weeks ago, and we'll be celebrating his life tomorrow at two o'clock in um, here at the uh, at the church, and then we'll be uh, interning him in Strong's Neck in their family cemetery there. Um, John, if you may have seen pictures, but a large hurricane worked its way through town um, and uh, John and his brothers uh, helped take the steeple off the top of the church so that the winds wouldn't blow it down. So if you see pictures around the, around the bottom of the church for that, John was the big guy yelling at everybody uh, on what to do and how to do it. So uh, that's wonderful. Uh, in terms of uh, the food pantry, the, there's a, a, a demarcation on the top right-hand corner of your service uh, leaflet that says uh, some of the items that we're looking for. Uh, so we invite you to uh, support the food pantry in any way uh, that you can, be it in physical presence or through your donation. All right. I know that Souls for Souls is right around the corner. Is that correct? That, that in October 1st. October 1st. So we're looking for... Uh, both sponsors and participants in that and so we ask you to uh, that's uh, a, a race to raise resources to make the uh, facility at All Souls Church uh, ADA accessible uh, so uh, we encourage you and, and thank you for all that what else am I missing all right it's hard to memorize it's hard to memorize the prayers it's another thing to memorize them and then do it in front of people uh, so you're doing a great job and Elliot will be celebrating the Holy Eucharist today all right walk in love as Christ loved us, loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God Amen. <clears throat>
vous. Please stand. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and grace. It is a right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through the great shepherd of your flock, Jesus Christ our Lord, who after his resurrection sent forth his apostles to preach the gospel and to teach all nations and promised to be with them always, even to the end of the ages. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. 
All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us eat the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on, feed on him in your heart, faith by thanksgiving. Amen.
Please join in the post-communion prayer on page 13 of your bulletin. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you.